Well, thank you, and welcome to San Diego. I'm joined by Craig James, Jesse Palmer, Aaron Andrews, and the Huskers quickly on the scoreboard. In a minute, 15 seconds into this holiday bowl, a short touchdown drive set up by an interception. Matt O'Hanlon, the senior safety with his sixth pick of the season. On a third and ten, they got pressure on Foles, and he made a mistake. Justin. Pressure on the first two plays, right? And, and then Foles just throws the ball up, and in the secondary, O'Hanlon coming up with a big play and sues the decoy for the touchdown. And it's really a vanilla Nebraska offense since the second half of the regular season. They've been forced to run the football to get their first drive inside the red zone. Not a better way you could start a football game if you're this Nebraska offense, Bo Pelini. Now it's been a very conservative offense the second half of the season after that turnover debacle against Iowa State. And this is what the Huskers have been able to do fairly regularly is get the lead, play conservative offense, rely on that defense. You know what? We all laughed about it. He said this could be a 7-3 game because of the defenses here today. <laughs> it's the Holiday Bowl. You know, you're already a minute something into it, and you've got a touchdown. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't a long touchdown drive. Let's be honest. <laughs> we may not see many of those. No. However, you'll get it. So, Adi Kanalik, who had that out of bounds kick against Texas and set the Longhorns up for their game winning field goal drive, his first one of the season, has a great leg, reaches the end zone, and here's Cobb. Travis Cobb stopped short of the 15. Two possessions, two poor starting field positions for Arizona. This is the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Kind of a, a gloomy day here in San Diego. Qualcomm Stadium is sold out. An eventful day. We had a an earthquake about 100 miles from here. Five point in on the Richter scale this morning. So a lot, a lot of stuff going on in, in San Diego today. We welcome you in. Two teams that are very happy to be here, but also two teams that came very close to the BCS. You know all about Nebraska, the close call with Texas, a second away from the Fiesta Bowl. Arizona controlled their Rose Bowl destiny until a double overtime loss to Oregon. Two really good football teams here led by their defenses. So that's why we say this could be a very low scoring game unless the defenses create the turnovers like they did. Foles pressured again. Throws an excellent coverage, a short completion to Jerron Kreiner. And he is immediately smothered there by Philip Dillard, the linebacker. Well, Nick Foles is a transfer from Michigan State. Actually entered the season as the backup quarterback, but after a loss to Iowa in the third week of the season, he's taken over as the starter. And I've really been impressed with his play. He can make all the throws. I was with him that game at that, and announced the game at Iowa when they brought him in. And you could just see that he had the ability, but as Coach Stoops said, he needed the reps, and those reps have paid off for them. In four yards on the completion. Nick Grigsby is in the game, and this is the first running play for Arizona. The Sutter step moved by the sophomore, and he gets about two yards. Grigsby has had a shoulder injury. Good to have him back in the lineup from the Arizona perspective. Nick Grigsby has to be an impact player for this offense. Injured his shoulder the fourth week of the season. He's a home run threat. They think he's close to 100%. They need him to be big here tonight. The offensive line, the guys in the middle there. Baxter, the center. Paul the guard right over Mr. Sue. Tough assignment tonight. Uh, whoever's on that offensive line tonight playing for Arizona has a challenge. They better have had their Wheaties before they showed up for this ball game. Wildcats need a long two on third down. Bowles wants to throw. Good coverage. And he's not much of a runner. Fires incomplete on the sidelines. Crick got there late, but a great job of the Huskers secondary again. People oftentimes talk about this defense, and they immediately think pressure on the quarterback. Great defensive line. Not enough attention is given, though, to this secondary and how good of a job they do covering in the back end. I think sometimes playing against Nebraska's defense, the quarterbacks seem to think more about the front four than they do about reading the play. And they got their minds on Sue and Crick and company, which you understand. <laughs> Not a lot of trust in the running game early going for Arizona. They, they professed to need balance in this game, but chose not to try to run it on third and two. Ian Cryer is in the punt. Niles Paul, the fine receiver for Nebraska, is back deep. It's a line drive kick. Paul has a chance. Cannot make the first man miss. Stop short of the 40. So Nebraska back on offense, up seven early going here at the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Welcome back to San Diego. Nebraska already on top. A six-yard touchdown drive. Their first possession following the O'Hanlon interception. Zach Lee running it in. He was the junior quarterback from San Francisco back in his home state. Benched for five quarters mid-season. Says it helped him as a quarterback, gained perspective. 
He's been doing a whole lot of handing off the last six games or so, relying on that good defense. This is Rex Burkhead who comes into the backfield, takes the option pitch, and has some running room. The true freshman from Texas, a nice game before Corey Hall stops him. This offense, you just said it, Chris. They're, they're going to manage the game. They know they've got a great defense over there. They've got a good offensive line. I think in the backfield, it's a solid backfield, but Mike McNeil at tight end gives them that additional weapon once that running game gets going. He has to have a big game. I think a big change. You see DJ Jones playing right tackle. He's backing up. Starter Marcel Jones not going in this game because of an ankle injury. He's considered the best offensive lineman on this offense. Jacob Hickman, the center, the only senior starter on this Cornhusker offense. Lee back to throw in first down, but now scampers up the middle and shows that he can make plays with his feet. Picks up 10. Devin Ross, the corner stopped him. You know, right now I'm seeing an Arizona defense that's watching a lot out there right now, not coming off, and Zach Lee adding that dimension with his legs that's going to pressure him. I love the decisiveness from Zach Lee on this play. He looks downfield, gets through his first and second progression, and then decides he's running. There's no hesitation. He's north-south. It is so big when your quarterback can move the chains, even if it's once or twice a game, it's added value to your offense. Lee picking up a little bit less than 10 yards. It'll be a second down and short. This is a Youngstown, Ohio battle. Mark Soups headed for Florida State as the defensive coordinator under Jimbo Fisher next season, but wanted to stay on and, and coordinate the defense one more time under his older brother, Mike. The Polinis and the Stoops families grew up in Youngstown. There were nine brothers between the two families. Of course, all of them played football. Cardinal Mooney High School there in Youngstown. You think, <laughs> what do you, kind of TV do you think they were watching? <laughs> it was all football. There's Carl, the older brother of Bo, who coordinates the defense. What a physical game, sneak for the first down. Exactly. Here's the Wildcats defense, which is arguably the best in the Pac-10 this season. Played very well at the end of the year. Keep an eye on Earl Mitchell, the tackle, and Brooks Reed. Elmore, excellent bookend pass rushers. Ricky Elmore at the end led the Pac-10 with 10 and a half sacks. And these linebackers do a great job running to the football. Xavier Kelly at the outside, lots of speed and athleticism. Yeah, Trevin Wade in the secondary, nine interceptions in just 13 career starts. They, they know how to play defense. This Arizona team made up mostly of Californians and Texans. Lee, a throw in first down. Kalinsky Gilliland catching a short game. He's a guy that hasn't caught a ball since midseason. Aaron Andrews in the drizzle on the sidelines. A little precipitation down there. Never ran to the holiday ball. Well, yet. thank goodness Jesse's not the meteorologist. He's been wrong on it all year. Actually, the drizzle has stopped. Wanted to add about these two coaches from Youngstown, Ohio. You mentioned they went to the high, same high school. How about this? Both guys born on the same exact day. Mike Stoops, a little older than Bo Pelini, has a good six years on him. And they both were graduate assistants together at Iowa. And Mike Stoops telling us they were both in charge of the hospitality room. And one more thing, guys, they were whalers together in high school. They painted houses. <laughs> a lot of history, which we'll get into tonight, as you see Lee take Peter. off and get down to the 30 before Brooks Reed tackled him. Yeah, south side of Youngstown, you know, tough Lee, area, good football area, immigrant Bruce families, and, and these guys uh, grew up with football in the blood. A lot of history between their families. Yeah, families know each are. other. They're all friends, but... Mark Stoops, the Arizona defensive coordinator, was actually a groomsman in Bo Pelini's wedding. Yeah. Well, I know this. Mike Stoops is going to miss his brother, Mark. I called Jimbo Fisher when he made the announcement. I said, hey, Jimbo, great hire. You just picked up two extra offensive series every game. Get ready for the ball to come back to you. The Stoops brothers' defense needs to stop the Oscars here on third and three. Play clock at four. Lee, again, buying time. And flips it downfield. Had a man wide open and misfired. Kerensky Gilliland was at the 10 yard line. <laughs> Mike Stoops, no, they got away with one there. Where, where were you? Got to stay with the receiver. But I believe that's the pressure that Lee's shown with his legs. They broke coverage and had to come up and support. I think it was a great job by Lee keeping his eyes downfield. It looks like Kerensky Gilliland just losing his feet down that sideline. You wonder, a little bit slippery out there. That's a big ball and missed opportunity for this Nebraska offense. And Alex Henry's almost automatic inside 50 yards. Look at the leg. I mean, that thing was from 46, and it was near the top of the uprights. 
He's an NFL caliber kicker and he gives the Huskers a 10 point lead midway of first quarter. The Arizona offense yet to do anything against Mr. Sue and company. Uh, players get busy here in San Diego. It's the <laughs> SeaWorld experience, the great San Diego Zoo, lunch in an aircraft carrier, something every day. <laughs> it's a great bowl game. A lot of fun for the fans and the players. So it's William, but you can call him Bug Wright, back deep with Nick Booth for the Canalic kickoff. is Bug at the five. Once again, good coverage, but Wright makes a couple of men miss and gets in the open. And Bug Wright finally gives Arizona some good starting field position out across the 40. We talked about Indomitian Sue, chatted with him yesterday as soon as this game's over. Well, he'll take a day or two off. It's back to work and get ready for the draft in April. And Mel Kuyper has him right at the top of the draft board. In fact, guys, he says that he's the best prospect of that position that he's seen in decades. Well, after all the awards that Indomitian Sue has won this year, he'll go down as one of the greatest defensive players in the history of college football. It's amazing to me, Craig, that he's almost let, he's led this team now in virtually every defensive category over the last two years. He's a defensive tackle. And, and we'll talk about what that means in this system here with Bo and Carl Pellini. They're not allowing him. If they put him on the outside to just cut it loose, they'll tell him what he'd do on sack records. This is Kreiner in motion, and they hand it to him. Jerron Kreiner on the fly sweep, but a big hit by O'Hanlon, the man who had the interception in the opening series. I like the idea of that because at this point here, inside Arizona's offensive line, they've not shown that they can handle the strength inside the block defensive line. And how about the physicality and the tenacity right now from this black shirt defense? They are dialed in. They've been flying around like missiles early in this game. These veterans were part of an embarrassingly bad Nebraska defense a couple of years ago. They did shame to the, the name the black shirts when these guys were young guys and, and coming up. And boy, are they proud that they've returned. Nebraska defense to glory on second down Foles fires and misfires receiver not looking it was David Douglas he's one for six to start the game Foles and you can see why opposing quarterbacks are completing less than 50 percent on the year against this defense they use what's called a match read principle on defense instead of spot dropping the zones they read the route combinations and cover them accordingly they're able to get bodies on guys very quickly and take throws away from quarterbacks Oh, shovel pass to Grigsby on third and nine, and nothing is working against Sue and company. They've watched some film, haven't they? They, they are ready for this Arizona offense. Uh, just watch on the inside. Watch the, watch the whole play of what Sue does and his hands, and look at him in the backfield with his eyes. Two blockers there at Arizona, but Sue continues through the blocks and makes the play. Great patience, using his hands, finding the football, shedding the blocker, and going to make the play. Nine snaps, nine yards so far for this Arizona offense. Keenan Cryer to punt it to Paul. Good high kick and Paul retreats and makes a fair catch at the 13 yard line. So at least the punt able to tip the field position and now Arizona's defense will try to get a stop down by 10. Huskers backed up at their 13 but already leading by 10 midway first quarter. Here's where Sean Watson will be very, very cautious, guys. I mean, the last thing they want to do is, is turn the ball over here and give Arizona's offense, which has done nothing, a chance. Well, that shouldn't be hard. They've been very cautious now over the last six <laughs> games. <laughs> they got cautious down. You're right. There's a keeper for Lee on the edge, and he gets a couple. As we check back with Reese Davis in the studio for Sports Center right now. All right, Chris. Mike Leach being fired by Texas Tech, the story of the day, the result of the situation, the alleged mistreatment of Adam James. Coming up at halftime, you'll hear a very candid interview I conducted with Texas Tech Chancellor Kent Hance about this situation and more of that on SportsCenter as well. Over on ESPN2, UConn and Cincinnati, Bearcats have an eight-point lead about halfway through the second half. 
Reese, thank you. Huskers have second and nine here. This is Halu. And Roy Halu Jr. picks up a couple yards. Craig, obviously, your son Adam and your family very involved in this, this Mike Leach story. Very quickly, what's your reaction to the decision today to let him go? Well, obviously, it's, it's not an easy situation for anybody. It's not one that our family nor I asked to be a part of. Uh, I'll be glad when this is behind us and our family can move forward, as can Texas Tech. I wish them the best of luck in the Alamo Bowl game. I know there are a lot of upset Red Raider fans right now that just don't understand. Uh, it's not an easy situation for my family either. I'm sure it's not. Not easy for anybody in Lubbock. Well, that's an interesting Alamo ball with Michigan State, all the suspended players, now the turmoil at Texas Tech. This is Rex Burkhead to the left of Lee on third and long, and Lee will take a shot over the middle. It's McNeil, the tight end, who has a first down across the 25. So the second leading receiver on this team, a tough guy who played through a crack rib this year, makes the catch. Mike McNeil's a great weapon at tight end. He gives them size advantages and mismatches on the outside, just doing a nice job in zone defense, settling down and giving his quarterback a target. He's on course through next season if he keeps at this pace to be the all-time leading receiver as a tight end at Nebraska. He's got good hands. We watched him in that Missouri game that we did, seems like a year ago, uh, on that rainy night, make a huge play to help them come back to beat Missouri. Lee keeps it. He has a little crease. Kind of a zone read look and a nice first down game. It's funny, you know, Nebraska head coach Paul Pellini told us that about midway through the season, as a team, they understood they had to start winning games a certain way. They're going to play good defense, try to make plays on special teams, and possess the football on offense. And Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, told us, hey, look, it's not romantic, <laughs> but it's work. I think what's special is that this is a coaching staff and Sean Watson especially then understands the team the, the concept is there they all agree on it they don't try to force a square peg in a round hole they go with what they have Lee's run the ball six times already tonight looking to throw here on second down and a nice dart across the middle catch made by Burkett out of the backfield He's a guy that had the big game against Colorado he's kind of a folk legend almost in the state of Texas as a high school player yep. See, Polini inherited a very, very bad situation in Lincoln after the departure of Bill Callahan. And a big improvement, and he really feels like they are set up to dominate the Big 12 North in future seasons and, and take a backseat to nobody in the conference. There's an empty backfield on first down. Burkhead split wide left. Lee pressured. Escapes and incomplete. Some footing problems for the receivers, in particular Gilliland on that far side. You know, sticking to your, your, your comment about Bo Pelini and what he said, he, he used the word, we think, he thinks he'll be five times better next year as a football team. <laughs> and, better, and better on defense, he said. Yeah. And, and, I, and that, that's unbelievable. And, and I think we all looked at each other like, wow, that's pretty impressive because this team is one second away from playing in a BCS champion, uh, game right now. They get 10 starters back next year on offense. They lose six starters on defense, but they get nine guys back that have at least started five games. There's a throw in first down and a catch by Brandon Kitty who's come on in the second half of the season as a weapon. He gets about three yards. The much celebrated game against Texas. Mack Brown lobbying for and correctly getting that final second, although Bo Pelini to this day, he says he'll never, never get over that game. That that second, you can see, ball did hit a railing over there with a second to go, allowing Lawrence to make the game-winning field goal. But there were some hot tempers on the Nebraska side. Carl and Bo Pelini living after the game. Huskers need seven on third down. Lee steps up, flips it short. Incomplete. It's Gilliland who slipped three times now in this game in the early going, and a flag is down in the backfield. Pressure came from Ricky Elmore, the fine defensive end, and is on Nebraska that is declining. Gilliland needs to get over on the sidelines with the equipment people to change his cleats. He's got to get new spikes. It's the third time now he's slipped. And the ball's fallen incomplete because of it. ACC Holy officials. 65 in the offense. Penalties decline. Fourth down. It's Mike Smith, the left tackle. 
you know, a lot of times it, it's it's a combination of cleats and and the wrong foot. You know, he just he just tried to adjust to the ball there, and his feet came out from under him. You got to know your shoes. I, I remember coach used to always say that. You know, Jesse, right? Know your shoes. Know your feet. Know your cleats. Yeah. The kicker Henry also does the punting. Know your cleats. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You need a half inch or a three quarter today. It's a high boot from Henry. And Bud Wright makes a fair catch at the 10 yard line. So fourth possession for the Wildcats, the third time they have poor field position. Aaron? Chris have just been hanging out around Arizona's offense over on the sideline. And basically what they're just telling each other is, is calm down. Freaking out a little bit too much over there. And in talking to offensive coordinator Sonny Dykes before the game, he said they really tried to stress don't concentrate so much on Sue in preparation for this game. They just didn't want the players just overthinking him. Now, what's funny is I said, did you limit how many times in the video and in the prep that you showed him, you know, throwing Colt McCoy to the ground? He said, yeah, well, the problem was all our guys watched that game. <laughs> it's hard to miss him. And if they watched a lot of other tape, they saw him starring. That's Gilda Antolin. Sophomore back, a short gain out of the I formation as they test the middle. I'll tell you what's been tough on is quarterback Nick Foles. He's from Austin, Texas. Of course, all his buddies, Texas fans watching the Big 12 title game. They've been text messaging Nick yeah. Foles ever since saying, hey, man, watch out for 93. Sending text pictures. <laughs> Two for seven start, the Texas native. Pitch to the far side. Block on the edge and a physical play by Delashawn Dean who gets near the marker. He's out to the 20. You know, it, it, and like I said, Jesse, I think as a quarterback, Foles gets those messages. He starts thinking about the defensive line, not reading. So Sonny Dykes calls a play like this, get it out of his hands quickly, high percentage throw. And you see again, though, that match concept from the Nebraska defense, how quickly. They're able to get bodies and take away those short, quick throws. That football was almost contested when it got to the receiver. May have gotten away with a block in the back on that play as well. 0 for 3 on third down so far. They run it. Antolin, he does get the initial first down for the Wildcats on near the 25. So it took 10 minutes to play for the Wildcats to move the chains for the first time. So important for the runner to be patient on this short yardage play because if he runs up in there and just ducks his head, he's going to run into the back of this blocker. Very patient, seeing the hole slithering for the first down. Arizona backs have been nagged by injuries all season long. Antoine's had an ankle. Rigsby's had a shoulder problem. They're pretty healthy now, though. This is Antoine in motion, and he takes the handoff. And he is smacked immediately. That was Philip Diller just waiting for him. You know, it's amazing when you consider the obstacles that head coach Mike Stoops in Arizona have had to fight through this year. 50 players had the flu earlier in the season, had to miss some time. Chris, you just mentioned three running backs down with injury. They started seven different offensive line combinations in the first seven games. And they went 35 days this year without playing a home game. And here they are playing in the Holiday Bowl. They were able to overcome all of that. It says a lot about this football team. Yeah, some gut-wrenching losses. Washington, Cal, the Oregon home game. Bowles, pump fakes. Thought about taking a shot downfield. Nobody open. Fires into the turf. This is excellent coverage early on by Nebraska. Yeah, you know, they said we will be aggressive at the point of attack. We're going to force you to beat us one-on-one. -on -one whether you're being pressed up in coverage or up front. It's a great example again of the coverage of this Nebraska secondary right there. Foles faking that quick screen pass that he just showed two plays ago looking for the big play downfield. But cornerback Alfonso Denard step for step with the receiver yeah. taking the throw I'm not, away. I'm not so certain Denard didn't bump him though at that before he made that break on the outside got away with a little bumpy. See what the Pelinis have picked up here on third and seven and they rush four. Coles has protection, takes a shot, and overthrows David Douglas. There were two Huskers in the neighborhood anyway, as O'Hanlon, the safety, was lurking. Here comes another punt. This Nebraska defense comes into the game averaging a little bit more than four and a half, three and outs per contest. Ninth best in the country, but you see already just imposing their will. They're, they're dictating the tempo of the game to this offense. And you know what? Arizona's defense, they're right behind them, number 10 in the country, nearly five a game. So 
Three and out. That's the way both of these teams usually play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Nebraska's got some impressive defensive numbers. Where you could put them all night. Here's the punt by Fryer. Ball lets it hit and he takes a good bounce. So they boot it away from Paul and it sets up Huskers at the 18 yard line. Well, Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN and ABC New Year's Day, 11 o'clock Eastern Time. Northwestern Wildcats are to slow down Ben Tate in the offense of the Auburn Tigers. That follows game day. Then it's Penn State and LSU at 1 o'clock Eastern Time on ABC in high depth. Interesting game. The Lions and LSU, both BCS caliber type teams. The Capital One Bowl is one of my favorite bowl games each and every year because it puts the speed and the athleticism from the SEC against the strength and power of the Big Ten. Penn State's got a very finesse team now. No. They're not that physical, Penn State. I wonder what the over-under in that game is. <laughs> <laughs> They're a finesse team. I promise you. I, I, you said it. They got out-muscled <laughs> by physical teams like Iowa and Ohio State. Well, option luck. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. That was not Tommy Frazier like as Donald Orton and Sterling Lewis combined on the hit against Lee. I, I'm telling you, this Arizona defense, once they get going, they play fast and hard and they play to the ball. I, I mean, look at that hit. They'll run you down. Donald Horton, the defensive tackle, they did a great job getting penetration up the field. It forced Sack Lee to slow down. You saw Sterling Lewis on the backside be able to make that play. Lots of great athleticism, Craig, on that defense. Seconds ticking away in this opening quarter, and the Huskers will not snap it. First quarter, all Nebraska, they are smothering the Arizona offense, and they convert a pick into an early touchdown. Tens it. Good job, man. We saw the interception from Matt O'Hanlon, his sixth of the year, in the opening series for Arizona. That set the Huskers up at the six-yard line. Zach Lee ran it in from four. They had a field goal, and Arizona smothered as we begin the second quarter. This is a wildcat look. Rex Burkhead, the freshman tailback, off and running. A wrinkle, and it works for the Huskers. Robert Golden finally dropping the freshman out near midfield. Well, when that formation comes up, it's easy to count the numbers in the box. They're nine up in here, so they're ready for the run, but Nebraska's offensive line matches up. Nice job of running, seeing inside the vision. I really enjoy watching this true freshman at running back. You know, he missed five games this year with a foot injury, came back late in the season, had 100 yards against Colorado and a big win. He's very impressive. I think with Roy Halu Jr., that's a formidable duo in the backfield that can wear this Arizona defense down. 34 yards, his longest run of the season. You fake it to Burkett on the reverse. This is Niles Paul. He's got a couple blocks, and Niles Paul shows his speed. Hey, we thought this would be conservative old vanilla, nothing pretty, but Sean Watson back-to-back -back wrinkles. Yeah, so much for a vanilla offense. Manage this, manage that, and, you know, this is an offense that you can tell they're gaining confidence just by the way that they're cutting it loose. But they're still running the football, and that's the interesting thing. It's not two tight ends and a fullback and just pounding it down at you, but they're finding different ways extensions of the running game to make plays and they're putting the, the ball in the hands of their playmaker. Wildcat again it's Burkhead as Lee is in the far right of the formation and Burkhead hammers for a short game. Oh, he kept saying nothing romantic about our attack the like six games but but given the extra practices some wrinkles tonight. And it's interesting because we asked Mark Stoops the defensive coordinator of Arizona what he thought watching these guys on tape and he said look they're not very complex we know that we just got to get lined up and go make tackles but all of a sudden we've seen a lot of wrinkles formationally from Sean Watson. Well but when they get into this area right here offenses against Mark Stoops' defense between that 5 and 25 30 yard line area they really do get aggressive defensively and mix up a lot of looks. And typically Nebraska gets conservative offensively in this area. They're already at Henry's field goal range. This is Lee for the keeper and he picks up about two. Xavier Kelly senior top tackler on this team made the stop and it'll set up third and about five. 
That was Nebraska team. They have a vision of what they want to be on offense heading into next year. They want to get back to some of the spread principles they had at the start of this season. But Bo Pelini's gone on record and said, look, I want to be 50-50, but I want to have some physicality in the running game as well. But, you know, the way you end your season, we've seen that Bo Pelini always starts one year out and finds what the real chemistry is in the makeup, and he sticks to it, and then that's what he goes with. It's Burkhead to the right of Lee on third down. Zach stands in the pocket and fires across the middle, complete. And down to the five-yard line is Niles Paul. Top receiver on this team, picks up 22. Boy, an accurate start for Lee. And this really is a result of the protection, the play action. You've got the running game going, and then you see Lee sitting in the pocket. Look at Paul all the way from the left side, drive hard to the middle of the field. It's just a great job by Lee, like you said, Craig, allowing the play to develop in the pocket, allowing the windows to open, being patient, feeling his receiver into that area. But he's delivering strikes. Paul limping behind the bench after making that catch. Once again, it's Burkhead in the Wildcat lead to the far left of the formation on first and goal. Burkhead standing up. That was easy. What a drive for the Huskers. There's some confusion inside those brand new white helmets on the Arizona side. That's Ricky Elmore. He led the Pac-10 in sacks this year at 10 and a half. Not having him in the game on any snap is not good. Nebraska lost four yards in their first play of this long drive. And after that, went to some wrinkles, ripping off huge gains. And Rex Burkett with his third rushing touchdown of the season. This defense. 17 points looks like a pretty pretty comfortable lead right now. 82 yards and seven plays, 17 nothing as we throw it back to Free Savis in our Bristol studios. And welcome back. San Diego, well known as an ice skating mecca, right? <laughs> Could do everything here. A little chilly today. It was down in the what, low 60s. It's got ice skating weather. I was here last week for the uh, humanity, uh, the uh, Boys Boys Bowl. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Mike Patrick, he thought it was freezing here, and it was 60 degrees. I kept saying, Mike, it's not freezing. It's pretty chilly. Arizona folks right now. They're in the 17 zip hole, and this is Bud Wright at the goal line trying to make something happen. Another good return gets the ball out near the 35 yard line. And our Pacific Life game summary things started ugly early for the Wildcats. Three plays and an interception by O'Hanlon of Foles in the opening possession set him up in good position. Yeah, don't you guys think, though, that this game started in the first and second down with a defensive line dominant, Jesse? And then that forced the bad throw down the field. And it set the tone and it set the offense up in great field position to take the go ahead score. We've seen a lot of wrinkles on offense. This touchdown by Rex Burkhead, miscommunication defensively from Arizona before they know it, already down 17 zip. This is. Grigsby on the delay, and he's hitting the backfield. Smothered again by Mr. Sue. He just tosses the side offensive lineman, doesn't he? Well, I'm, I'm sitting here. Let's see if we can see an offensive lineman at Arizona push and watch the hands of the D-line. There's nothing going on up there. They're getting thrown around. Big Sue just takes them down. But again, you notice how they don't penetrate and try to get in the backfield. They don't shoot the gap. They sit. They're very disciplined, very intelligent, none more so than Indomitian Sue. Von Dotsie goes 335, though. He just got shoved around. Foles taking a shot downfield. It's kind of a prayer. Had Grigsby could not make the play, and Dillard, the linebacker, way downfield in coverage. The, the technique that was taught, Carl Pelini told us coming into this game, following up on your comment, Jesse, was he was trying to tell his defensive linemen, keep fighting and keep looking. Don't shed the block too soon because their backs are patient. Yeah, and well, you see it paying off right now. He does such a good job coaching this defensive line. That's really the position he kind of focuses on. And it shows up. And again, it's not just Indomitian Sue. It's Jared Crick. It's Pierre Allen. Baker Steinkool, Cameron Meredith, Barry Turner. There's so many guys. There's a 
another long throw and just nobody open. He tried to get it to Bug Wright, but another punt upcoming as this Nebraska defense has given up 24 yards in 18 plays. It'll be very key right now that Arizona quarterback Nick Foles is able to keep his composure and not get rattled. It's not that he's been getting hit a lot. It's that nobody's been open. And the secondary has owned his receivers. He has to stick with his reads, keep his head in the game plan. This game is far from over. Aaron's been reporting that there's some glazed looks in that Arizona offensive team on the sideline. The coach is trying to get him to wake up. This is Paul at the 15. Niles Paul as a flag comes out. Takes it out across the 40. Niles Paul from the 15-yard line. Penalty flag that has been thrown. Hasn't been a penalty marched off yet tonight by this ACC crew. Illegal block and cost Nebraska some field position. During the return, illegal block in the back, 32 of the kicking team. Pimmer, we added to the team spot, first down. Now that's on Arizona. You will block in the back by the kicking team, so it will improve Nebraska's field position. Whew. Like I said, lots of stuff to do. You can just cruise around over Torrey Pines in a hang glider. That looks, that looks really relaxing until the wind stops or changes directions. <laughs> Huskers, after the penalty, the extremely rare block in the back is a change of quarterback as the true freshman Cody Green will take his turn. This is part of the plan to get him in the game, and he handles, handles uh, straight ahead to Burkhead. Green. The first true freshman to, to play quarterback as a, as a starter in Nebraska since Tommy Frazier. And he came in and started one game at Baylor, started the first quarter against Oklahoma, and then got replaced by Lee. But he, he brings a talented array of skills as well. And the coaches have said he's deserved this opportunity to play with his ability. He's only a true freshman, great athleticism, but also a very natural and pure passer of the football. Perfect situation to get him some work up 17 with great field position. There's a handoff to Halu. He's near first down yardage. Yeah, I saw Green back in the middle of the season when he played against Texas Tech. He came in late in the ball game, and you could see that he had the ability to take the team down the field. Good arm, but he's just an experience. Just needs reps. He's a fan favorite. Obviously, love his talent. Everybody loves the backup quarterback when the starter's struggling. The backup quarterbacks, everybody loves the backup quarterback. Burkhead, third and short, and he'll just sneak it with Green, and he gets a first down. Aaron? Chris, you talked a little bit about Nebraska losing that. Heartbreaking loss to Texas in the Big 12 championship. And like you said, we talked to Bo Pelini about it yesterday. You had said how the coaches said you just never really get over it. But he commended his players for helping the coaching staff yet again this season. Helping the coaches get over the loss. That was something they went through in a one-point loss to Virginia Tech early in this season. The coaches were down and out. Carl Pelini, I remember him telling us this was just one we couldn't get over. But the players said, in the long run, this will help us. you got to focus on the next game at hand. That's good stuff, Aaron. As Green keeps it. Burkhead can't make the block, and it's a, it's a short game. The young guys up the old coaches get over a loss. I gotta say, there's a swagger though to Nebraska that I'm seeing tonight. Hopefully, he told us when he took over the job two years ago, this team had no confidence. But after a game like the Big 12 championship against Texas, this team now believes they can win every game they play. And I gotta be honest, they, they look they have a different mentality tonight than what we've seen all year. And, and the expectations that they have for themselves. I mean, last night. When Bo Pelini made that comment, we're going to be five times better next year, that puts pressure on his football team. But he knows that they can be good, so they expect to be good. I like that kind of vibe from a coach. Here's Green with his first pass attempt. Low pass intended for Paul. Yeah, Texas has to come to Lincoln. You want to peek ahead at the 2010 schedule. I think the, the Husker Nation might be revved up and ready for that game. It'll be a prime time game. After what happened in Dallas, you think they'll be glad and Lincoln. It's going to be absolutely 
rocking. It's amazing to think they've sold out now 304 consecutive games at home. You, they, what they, a fan base. Somebody might be as good. Nobody is better at home with their fans and as good as their fans are as the Cornhuskers. You got to hurry here. Five with a play clock on third and eight. No. Spend a timeout. Green a little too methodical calling the play in the huddle. Total dominance 163 yards so far for the Big Red 24 for the Wildcats. The Nebraska coaching staff spent some time visiting with Nick Saban who was trying to pick their brain about defending the Texas offense and Saban shared some of his thoughts on getting a team ready for a bowl game so it was a two way conversation. So Cody Green on third and eight trying to get the play called after the timeout. Fires far side almost intercepted and a chance by Devin Ross to make a play. There's a flag down. And quarterback locked in on Niles Paul and Devin Ross read his eyes. False start. Illegal procedure against Nebraska. We're not set for one second. Penalties declined. Fourth down. Yeah, at some point, Arizona's defense is going to have to pick up and help their offense and make a play like this. Break on the ball, come in, pick six, and go the other direction. That's what this Arizona team needs for them. Well, Cody Green there showing you his youth a little bit. Not on the same page with his wide receiver, Niles Paul, throwing that ball outside. Niles Paul broke to the inside. That could have been a pick six. Instead, it's a 50-yard attempt from Henry. This is well within his range, and he just drives it through. Impressive kicker. Good from 47 and 50 yards, and the Husker lead grows to 20. Alex Henry is the most accurate kicker in Nebraska's history, and you can see why, Craig. Just automatic. And, and how well this team is playing. Offense, defense, kicking game. I mean, that there, there's, there's a lot of support for Bo Pelini's comments about them being five times better next year. Henry in his career now, guys. 48 out of 55. He has missed twice in his career inside 50. I wonder if the Washington Redskins are watching this game very closely. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> no, the, Rams, the Rams are watching closely. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, there's, there's probably 32 teams here <laughs> watching very closely because of a guy that happens to wear number 93 for the team in red. And he's going to do a great job with those interviews that are uh, uh, an important component when you're, you're giving a guy the kind of money that a number one overall pick gets. I mean, Sue, classy guy, well-spoken, humble, works hard, just gives every right answer, right? I just don't think that, that your, your risk exposure in picking Sue is minimal. It's not like a quarterback or receiver. Somebody, I mean, this guy's going to save and accept an injury. He's going to have an outstanding, lengthy career. But a lot of guys at that position Drafted first overall with great expectations. Not all of them yeah. have panned out. There have been some busts. Yeah. The defensive linemen taking number one overall. There have also been some great ones. I like this guy's chances, though. Okay. I, do. I do too. Sure. Finalik boots it. This is his shortest kickoff of the night. Taken at the 13 by Booth. He fights to the 25. Let's check out you know, the draft history and the D tackles who have been taken number one overall. And go back to the great one out of Michigan State, Bubba Smith, taken by the Colts. And he was not a bust. I was just going to say, <laughs> definitely not a bust. And as Sims, your ex teammate? I, I played with Kenny. He was one of the best, if not the best, college player I ever played against. And he was a good pro. So was Russell Maryland, obviously. Dallas Cowboys. Edmund, eh, not so much. 92 with the Colts. Injuries bothered him. Big Daddy Wilkinson, Bengals in 94. As I said, it hasn't been 100% batting average at that position. Antolin is in the game. Takes the handoff and breaks a tackle. Still going. It's the best running play of the Wildcats so far. Larry Asante kind of bounced off him there. And they need to up tempo here, do something different. They're, they're four out of five possessions, three and out. 
What I think is interesting, Craig, is that the coaches told us that Nick Grigsby was going to be more involved in the running game because of his home run hitting abilities, big play ability. We have not seen him very involved yet on offense, not only not carrying the ball, but Kiola Antonin so far has kind of been the, the answer when they've decided to run. Yeah, Grigsby just two carries for three yards. Antolin still in the game with the ball on second and short. And he gets nothing. <laughs> Philip Dillard came around the edge to make the tackle. You know, at this offensive line, you, you want to say, hey, they got to get it going and set their pads. But sometimes you just got to realize the defensive line in Nebraska is better than they are. Defensive coordinator, you know, and Sorry, head coach Mike Stoops told us heading into this game that he was curious to see how good Dominic and Sue and Jared Crick were. He wasn't looking forward to it, but <laughs> he's finding out. He's finding out right now, I think. A one of six on third down. They need almost two yards here. Foles in the gun. Just loops it downfield, trying for Kreiner, and a very nearly a second interception for Matt O'Hanlon. Could not come down with it. That's one of the loopiest throws you've ever seen. Identical almost to the first interception that we saw tonight with the safety over the top, throwing the ball up. Look at this ball. Did you see again Barry Turner, the defensive end, able to jump up, get his hands up in the air? I think Nick Foles just thought, hey, I'm not getting this thing batted down again. I'm just going to try to throw it up over his arms, and it resulted in a. Looks like one of those parachuters, those Navy SEALs coming in early in the game. Yeah, he forced Kreiner to play defensive back to prevent O'Hanlon's second pick. Yet another three and out for the Cats. It's a short kick by Kreiner. Bounces in front of Paul. The ball rolls out of bounds. Nebraska already up 20. 6.42 before halftime goes back on offense. Thought we might see a really good defensive stalemate tonight in San Diego. Demon Reds playing tremendous defense so far. Arizona limited to just 32 total yards. But the Wildcats defense been caught off balance by this productive Husker offense. Nebraska rushing for 119 yards already. And after directing the field goal drive, Cody Green goes back to the sidelines and the starter, Zach Lee, returns. In the pocket, incomplete on first end. Again, Gilliland slipped for a fourth time tonight. Receiver having a hard time keeping his feet. Ricky Elmore and Reed brought pressure from the edge. How about Sean Watson coming out throwing the football, though? You know what? Uh, it, it managed. He did say that he was going to transition a little bit, though, did. He said, I'm going to start setting up next season. And I'm really impressed. We've seen conventional runs from conventional formations. We've seen Wildcat. Reverse to the wide receiver. We've seen the zone read concept in the running game. There have been a lot of different wrinkles so far on offense for Nebraska. You're feeling frisky. Up 20. Easy to feel comfortable. He fires on second down. Paul has it on the sidelines and a first down across the 45. So Paul, who was limping after that earlier. 22 yard catch seems to be okay. And the statement that this offense is making and this football team leading into next year, the development, stepping up, throwing the ball, accurate, is just going to transition into next season. You know how important these bowl games are in order for teams to build momentum. No, you can either, it's feast or famine sometimes. You can play well in a bowl game, it transitions into the spring. You have so much more confidence if you can play well in these games. Keeps it. Toss down after about a seven yard gain by Cam Nelson looking ahead to 2010. Talked about that game with Texas. They actually opened the conference slate at Kansas State. A very tricky road game at Washington September 18th against Jake Locker. So he's coming back. You heard both of you tell us he thinks they can win all of these games. And certainly you circle October 16, you circle at Washington September 18, but they get Missouri at home as well. And, and their road games are really winnable, absolutely on paper. Right. Oklahoma State having to replace Zach Robinson and, and some other key guys. Troy Hiller Jr. back in the game, but it's another pass and a completion on the far side. And it's Chris Brooks, senior from St. Louis, his first catch. You know, 
certainly you see the, the frustration on the face of Mike Stoops right now. It just looks like defensively Arizona's on their heels a little bit. That they're playing one step behind. I, I, I felt like that from the first snap of the game tonight. It didn't seem like that they were really coming out and, and playing downhill on their toes. Uh, and, 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 and I'm not sure, Jesse, they're maybe not surprised a little bit at the, at the reverses and the plays and things that have come there. But they're yeah. expecting a manager. They're game. not dictating. They're having the tempo dictated to them. And third is short. This will be very close. Sneak near the 45 of Arizona. Keep in mind, this is a Wildcat team. They've had some tough, wrenching losses. The last couple of years under Mike, some some ones that he'll never forget, but they don't get blown out. I mean, since he's kind of turned things around from the dismal early years, and the last couple of years, I mean, they don't lose games by more than two touchdowns. They are in every single game, and their defense fights and competes. This is really unusual. And for this particular season, in their eight wins, they allowed only 18 points. In their four losses, they allowed 33. again and Lee back down after about a four yard game. Well, I think this drive is of imperative importance right now for Arizona. They have to bow up and make a stand. I, I don't even think if they go in the locker room if it's 23 nothing if they allow a field goal I think that really deflates them coming out here in the second half. And yeah, Nebraska's going to get the ball to start the second half. And this is an Arizona defense that if they do have a weakness is that they wear down late. They don't use many players as the snaps of the opponents begin to mount. This defense kind of loses power in the fourth quarter, but they've been dominated from the start tonight. Whistle. It'll be a false start for the Huskers. Star, 65 of the offense. Five penalty, second down. You know, I, I'm, I'm really impressed with the offensive line of Nebraska. And, and this is including an O line that Marcel Jones, their starting right tackle, didn't play and start. So DJ Jones has stepped up and they have played well up there. It's the first penalty that's accepted. It is on Jones, again, filling in for Marcel Jones. You look at this offense and, and you, you wonder, you know, the relative strength of the conferences. This was an offense that had a big, big problem gaining yards and scoring points in the Big 12, even in a lot of their wins. Lee fires downfield and making the catch is Brandon Kinney on the far side. In front of Trevor Wade. <laughs> and old Mike is shaking his head again. Uh, you know, as an example, this offensive line, watch the left side over here. Watch over here on the left side, Mike Smith. I mean, this is Brooks Reed. These outside guys for Arizona are good pass rushers. And Zach Lee is playing in great rhythm right now. He's just feeling it. He knows where he wants to go with the football. He's stepping into his throws. The ball is coming out beautifully. And he's been very accurate when they've called upon him to throw the football. Lee's run. Well tonight, run for 40 yards, eight for 12 passing. You need two in third down. This is Burkhead, hit in the backfield, fights forward. He was hammered. Tui Alamaka got him, but Burkhead, at 200 pounds, able to fall forward near the marker. Sue in there as a lead blocker again. You do chuckling. I'm chuckling because when Sue went up in there to block, Whoever he was trying to hit just said, I'm giving up, buddy. I'm going to your ankles. <laughs> Suffering. <laughs> I'll tell you what, on this play, I thought this was going to be an absolute gasher. Tui Halamata doing a nice job, but you see Sue. <laughs> Defender just getting underneath him. That's probably a smart move. <laughs> Fourth and one, nine formation for the Huskers. And a whistle. Timeout, Arizona. Stoops calling a timeout just before the play was snapped. Nightmarish first half. Not easy to coach against guys you know very well, grew up with, and you see that Mike and Mark both getting after their defense. Aaron? 
Well, Chris, I was going to talk about Nebraska's side of the ball there. Uh, Kerensky Gillian taking all those slips tonight. Well, I, I checked in with the Huskers equipment manager, Jay Terry, and he told me his phone is blowing up from his buddies saying, what the heck, man? Change his cleats. What are you doing? Well, after slip number two, they had him change his cleats. It's not helping. Jay's going to go back into the uh, locker room at the half and try to make an adjustment here. But, uh, yeah, it, nothing seems to be working. So all his friends texting him, leave him alone. He's trying. <laughs> Make the equipment guy look bad. That's about the only thing that hasn't been spot on for the Huskers in this first half. That's a good one. I love the call. Oh, why not? Yeah, might as well. You're yeah. rolling. And your offensive line, Craig, like you mentioned, you're blowing them up up front. <laughs> Five of six, three and outs for Arizona's offense. I don't think they're worried about them. They come out in the same formation. Now they shift. From the eye to an empty backfield. It's Burkhead in the slot left. And, you know, false start. Mike Smith backing out of the stands. And now we'll see if they still go for it on fourth and six. Yeah, a little tricky. Fooled themselves. There are some coaches here on the Nebraska sideline absolutely irate <laughs> with that false start penalty. You know, I wouldn't have been surprised. I think Zach Lee was going to run a, a QB draw or, or just a dive. The box only had five players in it, but you see the offensive, these coaches. Delaney electing not to try a 58-yard field goal, which Henry's capable of. Henry in there to try to pooch it down there. How's that? He's done that so well this year. He'll sand wedge backing up on the four yard line and Arizona <laughs> will start again in poor field position. Let's take another flag. Henry this year has down eight punts inside the three. That's a big number. This one. He's down at the four, pending the flag. During the kick, personal foul, 44 on the defense. 15 yards to premium spots, automatic first down. We got Ricky Elmore. And that was during the kick, so it'll be a first down for Nebraska. Mm. Wow. Frustrating first half and a loss of composure by the junior defensive end. Mike Stoops is looking for him too. Ricky Elmore probably go hide, to kind of hide back hide. there in the background. Oh, you see man. Mike Stoops looking for him, man. Blend in. Yeah. Put your helmet Move. on. Put your helmet on. There you go. He's not on the field in his defensive end position. <laughs> he should have taken the field quicker. Go hide in the sideline. Get back out there. So Oscar is now looking for more with the first down of the 26. They take it to Burkhead. Lee looking downfield and throws over the head of the tight end. Neal as we check back with Reese. Chris, coming up on the H&R Block Halftime Report, some harsh words for Mike Leach, and they were coming, the man in charge at Texas Tech. You'll hear from him directly. Also, perhaps a roadie's humanitarian bowl, the signature moment of bowl season so far, and a top 10 basketball upset. Mark and Lou are here. We'll bring it all to you. Coming up on the H&R Block Halftime Report. Please, thanks. You know, the Texas offense can commiserate in their first five possessions against the Oscars didn't get across their own 35 yard line. The Wildcats have not gotten past their own 41 in this first half. As Burkhead hammers for, for a couple. It's going to be Alamaka on the tackle. Yeah, I think they've proved out at, at so far in this half at least that this Nebraska defense dominated and took the spirit out of Arizona's football team. How about Nebraska's ability on offense to stay on the field, sustain some drives, allow that defense to get fresh and ready again so when they are coming back on the field, they're full go. Yeah, and this Arizona offense has averaged 72 snaps a game coming in, which is third in the Pac-10. Tonight yeah. they have 21. They won't get even close to 72. 
I think Bo believes that he's got, frankly, the best defense in the country. I think he believes oh, yeah. that he, sure. Florida, Alabama, any of them. He's, he's got a, the best defense in the country. They're number two in scoring defense, a tenth of a point behind Alabama. Lee throws in the end zone, breaking off the route was Kinney. He says, you know, the one common opponent, Virginia Tech, he believes that Nebraska did a better job against the Hokies than Alabama did. And only lost the game by giving up that one long pass to Danny Cole and then the touchdown throw from Taylor. Hard to argue with him. They gave up only 86 rushing yards in that game. I think right here, I think you have to give Arizona's defense a little bit of credit after having to come back out on the field after the penalty. Held strong. They're going to try to survive this thing, giving up only three points. And the automatic Mr. Henry just drives it through from 41 yards. He's three for three and still has only missed two in his career inside of 50. And Arizona has mustered a grand total of 32 yards in 21 plays. 10 passing yards for Foles. Uh, I, I'm not surprised on the passing yards. I mean I think the the defensive line just was going to dominate up front. Yeah, we're going to be short dink and dunk passes anyway. They're more physical, Craig. They're getting in the backfield. And on the back end, the secondary is dialed in. They are locked up on these wide receivers. They're not giving Nick Foles anywhere to go with the football. It has been completely dominating in all every position, really. Look at the improvement. 2007 was the Callahan era. They were known as the pink shirts. The once proud black shirts were, were embarrassed that year. And then look at the steady improvement. 21st in rushing defense last year, 10th this year. They've improved this year in total defense, rushing defense, scoring defense, sacks, and third down defense. And you know, last year, and they were good last year. Yeah. And they're fresh tonight. You know, these few snaps, only six minutes, time of possession for Arizona. So you've got a fresh Indomitian Sioux, Jared Crick. And he thinks they're going to be better next year. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I want to see it. I, I want to see, see it. it. Though, yeah. He thinks he has some ballers coming back. A lot of true freshmen that are redshirting that we haven't seen yet. He says he rattled out some names. Oh yeah, he? yeah. He's fired up. They'll come out highly ranked in the preseason if they keep this. based on tonight. I mean, they're and the performance of the Texas in the, in the Big 12 championship game. They'll be a yep, high and the schedule ranked. as well. It's right. favorable. Yeah. Right, and take a knee in the end zone. 35 seconds before halftime. Guys, when you start to look at, you know, performance by conferences in bowl games and how it might predict what would happen, the Pac-10 get getting beaten up here pretty good in the bowl season so far. USC was able to beat BC, but two losses to the Mountain West and, and this mismatch so far tonight. The one surprise for me was Oregon State. We yeah. had their yeah. Civil War yeah. game. I really thought they would come in. I, I was. You I weren't. Was. But well, I, I just I thought was. the, the way surprised. they lost the Oregon game. Yeah. Well, Mike, make it tough to get up Mike Riley was 5-0 in bowl games heading into that, but you can never underestimate losing a de facto conference championship game and, and how that affects you when you get into the postseason. Foal gets some protection. Goes downfield for Kreiner, who makes a leaping attempt. Could not come down with it in Nebraska territory. Asante and O'Hanlon, along with Denard. And a lot of red shirts around the top receiver on this team. This is part of the development of this tech, uh, this Nebraska secondary. Earlier in the season, in a game against Texas Tech, they got beat going up for the ball by the receivers. Yeah. Now they're starting to come in there and they're hitting receivers and making them pay the price for it, not letting the completion be made. It's so demoralizing for a quarterback. That was a great throw by Nick Foles, but all for naught. Nightmare start. The native section, 3 of 14. It's a shovel pass underneath. And a hammer by Crick. <laughs> Shake it. They are feeling it. Dillard is the second tick down. No gain there. You see Crick here inside again. Just engages. Finds the ball. The athleticism sheds the blocker. Looks very Sue-like there. It'll just slam a player on the ground. What a statement made by the Black Shirts in the opening 30 minutes. And Andrews with frustrated Mike Stoops. Yeah, Coach, frustrating first half for you. In your mind, what's the most important adjustment your offense has to make heading into the second half? Well, we just know that nothing's come easy. Every yard's been hard to get. Uh, 
you know, we're trying a lot of different things. Uh, we just have no continuity, no flow to our offense. Uh, turnovers, penalties, uh, didn't play very well. So what do you tell your guys at halftime about turning it around? Well, we got to play better. Uh, you know, it starts on the first series. Got to fight our way back. We've done it before. Uh, this is a, a, a very good team. We're getting out class right now. All right, Coach, thank you. And, Chris, the rain is coming down now. Oh, uh, it was the first rain in the history of the Holiday Bowl. It's never rained in 31 Holiday Bowls until tonight. Rain. Earthquake today, 23 zip at halftime. <laughs> Recently, the gang in the studio. <laughs> Set for the second half of the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl here in San Diego. It's been all big red so far. Tonight, not about the sacks for Nebraska's defense as it was against the Longhorns. It's been about great coverage, smothering the run, and Arizona has one first down and a total of 32 yards, 23 plays. Chris, Greg, Jesse, Aaron, back with you. All right, if you're Sonny Dykes. And your quarterback, Nick Foles, what do you got cooked up for the second half? Nothing's worked. The longest play is seven yards. You have to get back to balance. I think you look at the last two years of offensive football for Arizona. They've had great balance running and throwing the football. Only eight run plays so far in the first half. And then it's easier said than done against this Nebraska defense. But you got to keep them honest. Maybe get some opportunities for big plays in the play action game. Because right now in the drop back game, it has not worked. Nick Foles is four for 15. The longest play for Arizona is seven yards. Yep. I mean, you, if you're, if I'm the head coach, I, I have to believe heavily in history and Holiday Bowl lore that they're great comebacks ah, and lean heavily on that. That's my pitch. You're involved in one, right? Uh, unfortunately, on the wrong end of that, but that's my pitch. Were they facing Nebraska's defense though in those big comebacks in the second half? Oh, they were awesome. <laughs> There's Niles Paul with a crease, and this is a good start to the second half for the Huskers as they'll set up in Arizona territory. Pacific Life game summary shows not just a dominant defensive effort by Nebraska, but also strong half for the much maligned Husker offense. Look at that, 202 yards. Well, they've been multiple on offense. We've seen a lot of different formations. We saw a little bit of the Wildcat package. They've played two different quarterbacks. They've got different receivers and different running backs involved. And the fact that they've only had 23 snaps mean that means that Nebraska defense is not tired. They've, they've barely broken a sweat out there. So they'll be fresh in the second half, which makes it even harder for Arizona's offense to come back. Bowles is hoping he'd take the field down just 23. It's not any worse. Huskers also to get this playoff with one on the clock. Lee scrambles and just has to throw it away. Aaron visited with uh, Bo Pelini at halftime. A very happy Bo Pelini, as you can imagine, coming out of the half. And he said he just stressed to his team, keep it up. Don't let down. I want the same intensity you had in the first half here. And I said, guys, or I said, Bo, why has your offense had so much success? He just said, we've done a great job keeping Arizona off balance. We just put a bunch of stuff in there, like you guys mentioned, that they want to work on for next year. And his team has just really caught on. They're just having a great time out there. But he said he still wants it to don't let up. Keep it up out there. Bo never lets up. I mean, Colorado threw a touchdown pass when the game was basically decided. And Bo went crazy yelling at his older brother, Carl, for allowing a touchdown when they were up by two touchdowns with no time. Mm -hmm. A lot of intensity. And going back to what Aaron said, you know, so much for not being complex on offense. I mean, if you look the last six games, I formation right, I formation left, dive, sweep, power play downhill. We've seen a lot of different formations so far in this game on offense. And, and I think that continues what Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, told us last night. We're going to grow, develop, start putting some things in. We're going to stretch it a little bit more. And when you got a defense dominating like this, you can afford to do some things. So in the rain, the Huskers try to convert on third and four. It's McNeil the tight end with a leaping catch at a first down at the 35. Third catch for McNeil. You can see why Mike McNeil broke the tight end record last year with 32 receptions in a season. Great hands. And, and, and you know, watch him how he releases and finds the spot, settles down in there, and the communication with Lee. But I mean, Lee took a shot in the backfield. Throwing the ball. We haven't seen him go down very much tonight. How about coming into the second half, you're up 23-0. Three straight passing plays from Nebraska on offense. Another big shot at the 27-yard line and a nice first down gain. Kelly 
Now Lee, you know what? Early in this game, he scrambled and showed his legs and the ability to run the ball, a design play. Nebraska's had that success. I mean, they're averaging more than five yards a play right now, and this is a pretty good Arizona defense. They're a second in Pac-10 in total defense, led their conference in sacks. Now 111 yards rushing a game. I mean, they are yeah. a very good yeah. defense. Yeah. Burkhead, first down, Hammers to the 20. Big note for the freshman that scored a touchdown running out of the Wildcat formation. Uh, again, it goes for me at least up front with that offensive line in Nebraska. And, and they're allowing Sean Watson to call and do things to success up there. An offensive line has always been a staple at Nebraska. They've had great players play up on the offensive line. It's amazing to consider. They have not had a first team all Big 12 offensive lineman since 2001. They got four of the five back next year. Burkhead. It's more of that tough down. Right, you know, it didn't look like much, but he got six. But you're right, Craig, because that's where it starts on any offense. I don't care if you throw it 70 times a game or you're running the triple option. If your offensive line isn't playing well, you don't have a chance. And because of the way they're playing tonight, they can build that momentum into next year. Watch out. And when we talk about the momentum for next year, then you look across the ball and their defensive line. So you got both offensive and defensive lines that are playing well, talented, and dominant. It's against the Wildcat. Lee motions to the far left of the formation, and it's Burkhead in the shotgun formation. Keeper. He's close to the first down of the 10-yard line. And he keeps the ball. Got a little wiggle to him there, didn't he? But, you know, I'm watching the demeanor of this Nebraska sideline on this drive. Guys are pumping their fists. Coaches are jumping up and down. I mean, they're excited. Mike Stoops told Aaron going in at halftime, we're just being outclassed right now. And, and some nights, it's just the way it is. But you know, Bo delivered a stern reminder that there's still 30 minutes to play at halftime, oh, yeah. as Aaron said. I mean, he, it... I somehow can't see Bo Pelini jumping up and down in the locker room telling his guys great job when there's 30 minutes of football left to go. <laughs> see that old, that old football? That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a meatball. Oh, no. see a quarterback yeah. Quarterbacks yeah. love throwing in those. Uh, yeah. I was going to say that. Kickers and quarterbacks love footballs that are broken in. Easier to spiral to come out nice. <laughs> you can, off you of can, I was going to say, you can, it looks like an NFL ball. You can barely see the strike. Didn't that ball give the idea that back when Stoops and the Pelinis were growing up, that they use that ball like on Thanksgiving Day in their neighborhood game. It is a first down, first and goal. Ball start, number one of the offense, five yard penalty, first down. You do wonder, you know, where has this offensive execution been? I mean, I, I get it, they're winning five games in a row by playing defense and avoiding the turnover but if you take away the three games early in the year against Sun Belt teams this Nebraska offense averaged less than 18 points per game yeah you know I, I think that game against Iowa State and the eight turnovers I think that yeah. spooked them sure there's a keeper by Lee and he cruises down inside the five I agree but even running a conservative offense, where has this offensive line been? Where has been the crisp running? This has been an offense that's yeah. struggled mightily. Iowa State sticks out for you. Missouri sticks out for me. Down 12-0, entering the fourth quarter in that game and had done nothing. I mean, if, if, if that, I mean that just, if they don't win that game, right, it, where does this team go? Big they, Mr. Sue's going in, by the way, as a lead blocker again. He's a, a rather large fullback, 300 pounds, in front of Burkhead. Give him the ball. They gotta throw him the ball. I, I, I'm saying it. He's gonna catch a pass before this game's over. Now again, he's a decoy. His lead is throwing. He's in the end zone. He's open. Throw it to him. Oh! Picked off. <laughs> it complete. Sue was out of the pattern. Good call, Jesse. And he was open. I'm telling you, man. He did a nice job. He kind of snuck his way into the flat. You'll see they've been running downhill blocking schemes. Of course, everybody wants to get out of his way. Classic defensive lineman. The last thing you do as a receiver is put your hands in the air. <laughs> he's got it alerts together. everybody to you. And he's got them together like, you know, I'm going to keep them here together. I don't know, man. He was still open, though. He was. But you know what I like is that he slid to the open spot. I mean, he found the softness back there in that deal. What a talented, fun guy. Hey, if you're Arizona, you got to catch that ball. 
in the past. Two drops. Yeah. Two drops on interceptions tonight. So third and four. They can get a first down just short of the goal line. Lee, plenty of time, flushed. And now just throws it away. Corey Hall in the blitz provided the pressure late. But good coverage by Arizona, and they'll force yet another field goal attempt by Alex Henry. Uh, at 23 to nothing, it feels like it's double that, though, really. And, and this defense has, has somehow managed to make some plays going in before half, forcing the field goal a couple of times. I'm just curious to see. How many yards will Arizona finish? I mean, are they going to get to 100 yards in this game? Well, one thing that we know for certain, the three postseason games at Nebraska what's under what's a Pelini defense, they've gotten after teams. Uh, they smother them. That's right. He was an interim coach the back uh, when they played Michigan State in the bowl game. The yeah, Alamo Bowl. Before yeah. Got hired. Yeah. Yes. A little chippy for Henry is now four for four. And the hole grows deeper for this. Overmatched Arizona offense. He will be back in his defensive role when we continue from San Diego. <laughs> Who's the bigger star here in San Diego? Shamu or Sue? He is a whale of a player, if you know. Why am I saying that? <laughs> Bada boom. All yeah. I know is you can see his eyes taking a peek. Look at this. Yeah. Like, hey, uh, you stay over there, dude. Look at look at Bo Pelini in the back. Mr. Tough Guy? Well, well, watch him start kind of creeping. Uh, not really feeling good about <laughs> There's the some whales. encroachment there by that one whale. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. Bo's feeling it, too. <laughs> Sue came into this game. Two and a half tackles for loss behind Grant Wisterman as the Nebraska career record, 58 and a half. Officially has one TFL tonight and also has a, a tackle for a no game. Set to go back to work. And Alec through the fog, drives it to the goal line. Bug right. A couple nice returns in the first half, but slips down at the 17. Two shows little dance moves there. And then got after folks. This is Grigsby brought down for no gain. There's the tackle for loss in the first half. Just tossing aside offensive linemen. No sacks by this Nebraska defense so far, but they've been pressuring and covering very well. It doesn't appear that the banquet tour of December affected <laughs> Mr. Sue much, did it? How many miles did that guy travel? All the hardware he collected. It's unbelievable. Amazing trophy case. Outland, Lombardi, Gursky, Bednarik, AP Player of the Year, which is a first. He's the first exclusive defensive player to ever gain that honor. Down in the rain, Aaron Andrews on the field. Hey now, hey, we asked Bo Pelini about, uh, you know, going on the award circuit with Ndamukong Su and, and just what it was like to witness everything. And he said he's just never been more proud of a player. And, he shared a story with us how last year he flew to Portland to meet with Sue's family and discuss him coming back. When Sue picked him up at the airport, he said, I am coming back to Nebraska for my senior year. And, and Bo Pelini just said the way this guy has handled the attention, handled the spotlight. Shoot, he's run away from me in post-game interviews because he doesn't want to take all the spotlight. He wants his you know, teammates to be included as well. You better catch him tonight, Aaron, because we want to hear him after his final college game as he looks toward the April NFL draft. Harvard is considerable. He's going to have to have a, a very big trophy case and Nebraska's trophy case will, will grow. It, most points ever, by the way, for a fourth place finisher in the Heisman Trophy. I had him first on my ballot and uh, I thought he was the country's most outstanding player this year. And Big 12 player of the year in the same conference as Colt McCoy of Texas. Now one more time. Arizona faces a third down. They're one of seven. They need five yards. This is right in motion. Jumping offside was Turner as the snap is collected by Foles and he fires complete. Elishon Dean, a rare productive play, the longest of the night for Arizona. Sue was in there on the pressure. This will be an Indomicon, late hit on the quarterback. Gain was 13. 
so important for this offense at Arizona to get something out of this drive. They need points to get back in this game. There are two fouls on the play. Offsides against the defense is declined. Personal foul, rough in the passer. 93 to the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. The time they're not saying Sue, they are booing the Nebraska fans. Uh, uh, Sue comes in just a little bit late. I I think just because he's so powerful, it accentuated the hit that he gave to Foles. You see how quickly Foles hit the ground? Keep in mind, Nick Foles is 245 pounds. Yeah, he's thick. Bo Pelini thought he kind of reminded him in terms of his body type to Jamarcus Russell. When you look at him, he's Foles the is yeah. Yeah. winning the least 10 pounds for next year, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, don't look now. The Wildcats have reached midfield. After the penalty, this is their furthest advancement. Nothing for Antolin. Here's the hit again. Is this a, this is not a real? Yeah, it's there. But why? A real he, late hit. What, a bit late. He just his hips, the way he plays with a flat back, the power that he exudes on opponents. Uh, I haven't seen that. Reggie White played like that with the flat back and the big arms and the and the technique and just the power to throw people around. You know, nobody talks about Pierre Allen, the junior defensive end from Denver, who's the next star for this defensive line, along with Crick on the inside, but he's the one that got to Foles there. Yeah, top of the field, top of the deal there. Pierre Allen, 23 career tackles for loss. He plays in the backfield, too. How about it, Jesse? How'd you like to coach the D-line here? Well, here's the thing. I mean, you want a double team in Domicong Sue, great. Fine. But that means there's three other defensive linemen that are in one-on-one -on -one situations, and they're probably better athletically than all of your offensive linemen. It's just a pick your poison dilemma when you play against this defense. How do you like your chances on third and 19? Not good. Foles running out of time. Got away from Sue. Can't get away from Crick and takes a big shot on the tackle at the 42. Deion Gomes came up there and leveled him as Crick was grabbing him around the waist. There's another great example of a coverage sack from Nebraska. The reason that Nick Foles can't throw this football, there's nowhere to go with it. He does a great job buying time. He's been able to avoid Sue, which a lot of quarterbacks have not been able to do this year, but. After Watch the hit, the shot he takes mm. Gomes coming in. It's almost a blow to the head. That's a lot more of a penalty than what yeah. Sue did. I agree, that's a blow to the head. Fryer has been a busy man tonight, the Wildcat punter. A sixth punt comes down out of the fog and the rain, and Paul makes a fair catch at the 10 yard line. All Big Red here in San Diego. All fun and games for both teams the week leading up to this holiday ball, but not tonight for the Wildcats and Tommy Totogi. The freshman fullback is trying to stay awake, and this Arizona offense has been unable to wake up tonight. Lee figures to be. Very protective of this football in the rain from the 10 yard line. Arizona's had a couple chances defensively to make plays that could have turned this around, but Devin Ross has dropped a couple of picks. Yeah, he has, but you know, it's just one of those nights where they couldn't do anything to make a play. Drop pass here. That was right before halftime. That would have been nice for them, but another drop. Well, when they had opportunities, like you saw that ball get batted away by the Cornhusker secondary, just Nebraska's just had better effort. It made the plays when they needed to. What head coach Mike Stoops said before halftime was, was right. Every yard they've had to gain on offense has really been earned. Burkhead. That's back to the original line of scrimmage before Brooks Reed stops him. And really offensively now, Arizona has completely abandoned the running game. I mean, they're not even thinking about that. They're just dropping back. Trying to find ways, trying to find to get guys open. They have 42 total yards, 14 rushing, 28 passing. I, 
Craig, you did the USC game when Foles marched Arizona down the field with great poise. He played very well against the better teams in the schedule, Oregon State and Oregon and Stanford. So this is a shock for him. I think Chris he Sanders, a lot of confidence. 12 plays, 80 yards. Yeah. They were down 17 14. He took them down the field. I mean, they've he's, got the ability. Well, he's been very good against Pac 10 defenses, but not tonight. Throw across the middle. Paul makes the catch, then gives up yardage and now fights back for a first down to the 25. Zach Lee has really felt comfortable tonight throwing the football over the middle of the field, particularly on these in breaking routes to his big play wide receiver, Niles Paul. Yeah, this is the second route that we've seen completed right here. And, and Paul having the courage to stay in there. Good thing he got back and got the first down because he, he gave it up for a while there in that yeah. cross field run. The rain's coming down out there and. Yeah, that's a nice job. We thought they might just run it and punt it, but they've got a lot of trust in Lee tonight. You can see he, he's been lucky to dodge a couple picks, but he's been pretty accurate on the keeper. Wrestled down for no game. One thing I think it's really interesting to watch here in Arizona in the second half is one thing they talk a lot about as a team is pride. Mike Stoops told us every time this team takes the field, he reminds them you're either getting respect or you're losing respect. And I mean, they have to show something here in the second half. They're losing it right now. Oh, they sure are. And so is the Pac-10. But he'll do a nice job of reflecting back on the season and what his team accomplished. I mean, the first time, or only the third time, that they've won six conference games in conference play. So they they did a lot. They, they had a good season, but didn't want to end it on a note like this. Take the hand off it. Trey Robinson and Lee Hammered for no gain. It does make it a long offseason, and this is a big deal for the Arizona program. To, to get to a bowl like the Holiday Bowl is a big deal. And it's a program that Mike believes has turned the corner. They have a lot of guys registered, and they believe the foundation is there. The players have accountability and character and chemistry. All those things for next year. But this is a deflator, no question, because they've been so overmatched. Think back to that Oregon game where they lost in overtime. This team is that close inches a play away from three seconds yeah winning the title Lee again back to throw on third down pump fake slips it downfield and Paul is wide open Niles Paul headed to the end zone and he'll draw a celebration penalty a little flexing by the receiver after a 74 yard touchdown Devin Ross is long night continues he got beat. This has become a nightmare. This is a double move by Niles Paul. You're going to see him here. He's going to run a curl and go. Devin Ross slips on the break, and that allows Paul to get in behind him. Just a perfectly thrown pass from Zach Lee. Paul able to run under it for the explosive touchdown. Everything going in the way of the Cornhuskers right now. That's the longest touchdown pass of the year for Lee. And the spike and the flex. Yeah, that'll get you flagged. They, they let a little celebration go after the sack, the previous defensive series for Nebraska, but not that time. So Paul with his fourth touchdown reception of the season. And the total yards in this game. 337. Now oh, he's down 33 zip. Niles Paul, the latest to reach the end zone. It's been a tough second half of the season for Nebraska's offense. Even though they've been winning in a miserable night. For Devin Ross and the Wildcat defense. Probably didn't even bring raincoats to San Diego from Arizona thinking they would need him and now they're getting soaked and they're getting taken behind the woodshed. Desert to the desert. Because of the celebration penalty on Paul, Kanalik will kick off from the 15 yard line. Scoots it along the ground. And Orlando Vargas, linebacker, takes the ball inside the Husker. 45-yard line. You know, back in 2006, that's the last time 
that Arizona's really been beaten down like this. It was a game at LSU. Bo Pelini was the defensive coordinator, and he said that his team was kind of going through the motions until the pregame when Arizona came out and started stomping up and down on the eye of the Tiger in Baton Rouge. And that got the attention of the Bayou Bengals. There was a frenzy in the locker room. They went out, and they laid a beat down 45-3 against Arizona. But back when the Wildcats were not a very good team, that's the last time anybody's done this to Arizona. Hand off to Rigsby, who has not been able to make an impact tonight as we check back with Reese. Chris, Sports Center right now. Mike Leach out as head coach at Texas Tech. Texas Tech Chancellor Kent Hans telling us it was largely because Leach refused to cooperate in trying to resolve the situation involving Adam James. More coming up on Sports Center and also on College Football Live, ESPN 2 at 12.30 Eastern Time. Rhodey's humanitarian bowl came down to a two-point conversion with four seconds left, and Idaho converted to beat Bowling Green 43-42. Sports Center after the game, stay current ESPN News. Mm -hmm. Foles hammered. Mm -hmm. A huge loss. And once again, it was Barry Turner combining with Pierre Allen and Sue. They had a team meeting back there at the quarterback. Jesse, let me take this replay because you might pass out in the flashback. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the quarterback sees now. He's back Lost in the pocket, 13. and it's a sea of red. And those are big, talented guys. Ah! Is that, does that have a flashback for you? Yeah, I've played in some of these games <laughs> when guys up front aren't doing a great job protecting and the weather's bad and the defense is having meetings standing above you. It's not a lot of fun. Did you see all the white jerseys on the ground, the offensive line, missing blocks? Because these red jerseys are starting to pin their ears back now because there's no threat of running. Third and 18. Off a hand and incomplete. And that 11-yard loss on that sack. Moved Arizona back to 34 total yards. It's not a very good performance for, for Sonny Dykes in the offense. And he's been mentioned, Aaron, and with some of the speculation about Texas Tech's next coach. That's right, Chris. And before the game, I actually mentioned to head coach Mike Stoops, I said, is it possible you could lose your defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator in the same year? And he said, it's a possibility. Then I asked Coach Dykes, and he said, listen, I have not been contacted at all. But, Chris, someone did joke while we were standing uh, at the 50 yard line and said hey this is going to be a rough night for you to give an interview of course and Sonny Dykes did laugh he laughed at the time then of course exactly of course but you know Spike Dykes a long history at Texas Tech this is not the, not the uh, job interview you want to if you're an offensive coordinator to face that well, defense. And, and Spike Dykes the old Texas Tech head coach he's here tonight watching this game watching his son you can only imagine right now Mike Stoops that it really hurts to lose a defensive coordinator of the caliber of Mark Stoops. But now all of a sudden, you know, things turned around here when Sonny Dykes was hired. Yeah. A couple of years ago, they brought in a, an innovative offense, throwing the football. They found balance. That's a big rebuilding project if they have to lose Sonny Dykes as well. That balance, you know what, 2,000 rushing, 3,000 passing. There's a Wildcat again, Burkett at quarterback. This time he hands it off. Robinson, a short gain, our Mazda drive recap. That's for his last touchdown drive. I was going to say, Chris, it has to be Nebraska you're talking about. Yeah, right? yeah. There has not been a drive going on by Arizona in this football game, but third down catch by Paul there and move the chains and the pump fake and beating Devin Ross on the 74 yard of the longest touchdown pass of the season for Nebraska. This time, Burkhead. Take it to him and Lee dragged down to the 35 yard line by Cam Nelson. It's really interesting. You know, Nebraska's come out in the second half and they've actually thrown the football, even with a big lead and the bad weather. It hasn't scared them away, but I'll give them credit. They've done a very good job tonight staying away from Arizona corner Trevin Wade, yeah. who had five picks on the season, second in the Pac 10. They picked on Devin Ross. They've had success. Here, here's where I think the success also occurred the fact that they're 7 of 13 on third down. And both of these defense came in 9 and 10 in the country in the number of three and outs forced in a game. Nebraska's continued the pace. Arizona hasn't. There's the kind of third down you love to have as Lee sneaks it across the 35. And he'll move the chains. Capital One Bowl Week continues tomorrow on ESPN. The triple header at noon Eastern. Houston and Air Force, a rematch of last year. The Navy and Missouri in the Texas Bowl. And we'll see if 
Mizzou can keep things rolling for the Big 12. Virginia Tech and Tennessee, the Chick-fil-A Bowl tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern. Houston and Air Force, number one pass offense against the number one pass defense. Yeah. Case Keenum with the Cougars offense. Pretty good football team. Oh, Ryan Williams, the great freshman running back at Virginia Tech versus that Monty Kiffin defense at Tennessee. Lee keeps it on first down. They're going to get real, real basic from here on out as the clock winds under 10 seconds in the third quarter. Nebraska just kept rolling. They did not let up. Ten more points in that third quarter. Smiles from Zach Lee. 15 minutes to play in a beat down in the rain. Only one team really came to play tonight. To begin the fourth quarter, Nebraska. Beating up on the Wildcats, 33 nothing. Husker fans came prepared. They brought a little rain gear. Team came prepared too. Yes. In all phases. Lee, play action. They're still throwing. Takes a shot downfield. That's over the head of Drew Young, the tight end. Niles Paul, who was limited to one catch for four yards against Texas, has gotten loose tonight. Yeah, he came into this game averaging about 19 yards per reception. He's been dependable, and even though, even on the running around the game, but even though the rain's out there, he's done well, done really well. And it's been a, a really a, a, an all-purpose game for him in the receiving aspect. He's run the football. He's had a big kick return, a punt return. He caught this long touchdown pass on a double move. Niles Paul has been all over the field, providing big plays for this big red offense. <laughs> Third down, shovel pass inside to Burkhead, who spins free and gets close to the first down. He'll be about a yard short. Earl Mitchell, the tackle, grabbed him. It's really close here. But you know, let's talk about Zach Lee for a moment here before they leave. His, think back to October the 8th, that Missouri game. He was going to be benched. Yeah. Remember, both Leaney and, 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 and Sean Watson had the conversation on the sidelines about replacing him and stuck with him. He hit Paul, which ignited him, and then Sue made the interception, and they turned that game around, which was enormous. But he was benched anyways yeah. later in the year, and he still came back, and I think it really made him stronger. And he's played well here in the second half of the season, with the exception of the Big 12 title game. Henry with the punt. Doug Wright smacked immediately inside the 20. And Arizona will try to do something here with 34 total yards tonight. Reese, thank you. We got the thoughts of Craig earlier on that topic. Arizona makes a quarterback change. Matt Scott, the sophomore from Corona, California, replacing Foles. Reiner Pollard after a loss by Eric Hag. Scott's the guy who started the first three games of the season. The offense struggled a bit, and Foles took over and has played very well. But in this beatdown, we're going to give Scott a chance. Uh, I wouldn't blame it on the quarterback tonight. It's uh, It was a team effort or lack of by Arizona. Well, Matt Scott, a little bit more athletic than Nick Foles. He's a bit better runner. He actually averaged 7.8 yards a carry throughout his career in college. We'll see if they can find some sort of way just to create a spark on offense. There's a run, and Scott dives forward for a short gain, and it'll be third and long. What do you guys want to talk about? We talk about the Rose Bowl? UCS. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah. You know what? I, I, I'm going to tell you, let's make an observation here first about <laughs> Texas's <laughs> offensive line playing against Alabama. You know they're going to be better. Now we've seen what they had to face with this Nebraska unit, so that helps get them ready to play against Alabama. The physicality and the problems they're going to present. Yeah, from their side of the football, sure. Good yeah. game, right? They, they, yeah. they better hope they have more success against Alabama's yeah, but defensive still, line. It, it might not get that much easier either. Uh, yeah, exactly. So now Foles comes back in the game on third down and fires over the head of Nella Sean Dean. Jumped a little bit early. Talked about Crimson Tide and the Longhorns. From Pasadena. And again, save it. Just having a little conversation with the Pelini brothers, talking defense between groups that have a lot of mutual respect and what Nebraska did against Texas. It's really curious to see that Texas defense, statistically the best run defense in the country, against the physicality and the style they probably haven't seen very much playing in the Big 12 this year. Yeah, that's for sure. Breyer. 
low kick taken by Paul at the 45. And the Huskers will start at the 44 yard line, the seventh three and out with the zone offense. From all the fireworks belonging to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Huskers back on offense. Again with this Wildcat look and Rex Burkhead, true freshman tailback, set to take the snap. Lee is split wide left. Burkhead runs behind Robinson. Short game. Ball is snapped to number 22. This is not a look they did the season. I mean, this is a this is a bowl wrinkle. No, it, it's here. certainly different. I, I just commend Bo Pelini and the job he's been able to do in two seasons as head coach at Nebraska, back-to-back -back nine-win seasons, and this year became the first coach in the 14-year history of the Big 12 Conference to win at least a share of the division title. Burkhead shows patience, runs around the block, and gets a first down near the 30. There's some wheels there. You know what? That that's playing fast. And, and uh, you know, a thought that hit me when you were talking about Bo Pelini, the, the, his results in the second half of the seasons, how he how they finish the year, and and uh, they're a team, and you see the momentum and how he's put it all together. It's by far their best performance of the season. Burkhead again. Fakes left with a throw and then is hammered after a one yard gain as this field begins to get slicker. This is only the third game they played on this, this new side after they had the high school championships out here. They, they resided it. The Chargers have played one game, the Poinsettia Bowl you did, and then now tonight. They weren't slipping last week though. Of course, it's raining now, but they were, they were slipping when it was dry. Yeah, and Craig, to touch on what you just said about Bo Pelini, I mean, he knows how to win. As a defensive coordinator at Oklahoma and LSU, he won national championships. He knows what it takes. And he's putting it in place. Burkhead, knocked down. And boy, does it look like a, a brilliant hire. From Tom Osborne. Oh yeah. Because there were some doubters. I mean, you know, Bo had never had head coaching experience. Was a defensive guy, which goes against the current trend to some degree. And I think, in fairness, I think when a lot of people think about Nebraska defense, they immediately say the name Bo Pelini. I think people have to understand Carl Pelini, his brother, has had a huge influence and impact on this defense as well. I mean, they're almost 50-50 there on that unit. Yeah, but remember when they when they brought in. Pelini, this black shirt defense had gone south. It was non-existent, and that, that that traditionally was what they were they really needed. This is Burkhead retreating, and he'll be dragged down for a loss. And Bo said his job was to fix the defense, and that's what he had to do. And offensively, he still feels like it's a work in progress. He'll go back to to a more 50-50 run balance next year, throwing the ball more, hopefully, with Lee. But boy, he. He's got this thing on track. And I'll tell you what, watching Rex Burkhead tonight, the true freshman running back, I mean, you think about this running back core Nebraska's going to have next year. Roy Halou Jr. will be a senior next year. Don Travius Robinson is a very talented, another true freshman running back they have. It's a bit bigger. He's a thumper. And they got three good backs coming back. This is Henry. Just, it's a line drive out of bounds. And Arizona pinned deep one more time. Poor field position has not helped the cause tonight, but they've been totally overmatched. Here's our Pacific Life game summary. And guys, the tone was set in the first few plays of the game. Foles was pressured, and on third down, loops it up. O'Hanlon with his sixth pick. That set up a short lead touchdown, and the Husker defense with Sue and company has taken over. Missed opportunities for Arizona to make interceptions and perhaps reverse momentum. But the Wildcats give up the big touchdown to Paul here in the second half. They've run three plays in Nebraska territory. 35 total offensive plays for 37 yards. Ouch. Take over now with the 12. It's Foles in the game. And 
batted down. Just nobody open. Nobody available for Foles tonight. And you see that Sue and Crick and the studs are still in the game, even though it's 33 zip in the rain and the sloppy field. I think if you're a Nebraska fan, you're probably seeing the last series in the snaps of Indomitian Sue. It's a bittersweet moment for him. He's had such a magical season, but this is the last time he'll ever don the white helmet with the big N on it. You know, he's not a really emotional guy. He says a couple got a little bit choked up in his final home game, but I wouldn't expect the tears to flow tonight. Start thinking about the, the seven zeros he's going to see on a contract. <laughs> ah, nothing working. Off the hands of Terrell Turner. Terrell Turner, the intended receiver. This is what makes him, I, I think, a, a safe uh, pick coming up in the NFL. He's Wait, loose. Dancing ready with the to stars. Go. He's ready. For yeah, he's ready, he's ready <laughs> to go for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think Sue's got better moves than Sap, though. What do you think? He looked pretty good for those headphones. I, I want to see him playing tackle, not, not on the dance floor. Oh, I don't know. Jesse wants to see that seven-figure check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> He says he's going to begin the process of talking to agents and all that pretty soon. Bulls fires incomplete over the head of Dean. It's interesting. He, he said he's going to go home to Portland, visit his mom, have a chance to just kind of unwind a little bit. And his plans are to head back to Nebraska and start training for the combine and all of his workouts on campus. Yeah, and we were saying how we admired him for that. You know, and, and, he's gotten his degree already. I don't know if he'll, if he'll actually follow through with it. We'll yeah. see. Those agents get you pretty soon. You find yourself in one of those those training facilities. But well, what does he have to go improve on? You, you made the point last night at dinner, Jesse. You said, "Hey, he could go do 15 reps at 225." He's still a great player. He's still, he, yeah, he's, he's still, up there. He's still a top three pick. There's nothing he can do at his interviews or combine that'll devalue himself. Pump will roll dead once again in the. Arizona side of the field and now was talking about his his ancestry his athletic career began in a very different playing field as a kid. I'm just really proud of where I've come from my dad's from Cameroon my mom's from Jamaica so take a uh, great pride in their heritage. My dad played professional soccer in Europe I was born in Douala Cameroon so soccer was huge to me that was my really my first love of sports. Um, I started when I was three and that's kind of really the only thing that I knew of. Too many yellow cards knocking people down in soccer. And he says he's still got skills. He, he says he can still dribble the ball. He played a little bit of everything. Some striker, Jesse, some goalie. I spoke to him yesterday at the uh, the kickoff luncheon, and he's a huge soccer fan. He can't wait for the World Cup. His dad almost played in the English Premier League. That's how good his dad was. Yes. Hey, they're not handing out seven-figure checks over there. Yes, well, they, yes are. they are. Bigger than bigger than the NFL. Not for, right, not, not for that guy. No, no, no. no, no, no not no, for no, 300 pounder. No. No. They, they, trust me, they get well paid. Cristiano Ronaldo yeah. in La Liga is doing okay. I think he needs to go to the National Football League. Yeah, I'm with you. Jesse, American we're not, Football We're not going to get Craig into a soccer <laughs> conversation. <laughs> this might be a short one. Hey, I used to coach soccer. Don't, I told my midfielders, don't let them cross midfield. Keep it out of the goal. I bet your team was physical when you coached soccer. No, no, no. We were smart. I, I had some good. That was back when they were six, seven, and eight years old, though. And they're posing for pictures. The cornheads in the stands is Cody Green is a quarterback. And apparently, Zach Lee's night back in his home state. Off to a good start and a good second half for Lee as well. Throwing for 173. He's run for 65. Green lowers the head. Once again with that quarterback keeper, Cody Green. You know, that they're happy right now to get Cody Green some reps here late in this football game. All these count because when they transition to the spring, there's going to be competition still all over the place. I'm not sold yet necessarily that Nebraska knows who their quarterback is necessarily heading into this year. It just depends on Green's development, if he can really step up and, and compete. Zach Lee's got a lot of confidence the way that he's yeah. finished the season. Yeah. Made a great case for himself tonight. Third straight keeper for Green. Stopped keeper. short of the first down. Be surprised if the Huskers weren't ranked 
preseason top ten. I agree. I would be surprised. It'd be hard not to, based on how the not uh, on helmets or jerseys or name or anything, how they play. Yeah. I mean, you know, th they, when they had their five-game winning streak to end the conference run, there they only had five turnovers. They were playing error-free. Great defense. They followed it up in the Big 12 championship game. I think when you look at what they have coming back, coupled with the schedule, yep. and this performance tonight, man, it'll, it'll, man, you're right, Chris. Top 10. I mean, people will say, wait a minute, you can't replace the most decorated defensive player ever. As the clock expires, they'll give Henry some more room to try to knock the punt dead in deep in Wildcat territory. But the coaches feel that with Crick and with the guys who'll step in at that position that again this defense can be as good or better next year. Well, that's the amazing thing. Jared Crick may be the best defensive lineman in the country that no one really knows about. Jared Crick earlier in the season against Baylor registered five sacks and 13 or and seven tackles for loss with 13 tackles and 10 solo stops. He's a monster himself and probably a future first rounder in his own right. Yeah, he's a redshirt sophomore. So he, he actually is draft eligible this year. He's not going to come out. Hasn't even crossed his mind, he said. He was born in Colorado, but grew up in Kozad, Nebraska. We expect that maybe Indomitian and Sue will get a little bit of a curtain call. He's still in the game, although the Pelinis have begun to pull some of their starters. It would be nice to. Let this guy leave to the applause of the Husker faithful who've shown up in San Diego and braved the rain to watch a dominant defensive performance. Lintelin plows straight ahead. Guy who took a while to learn how to use his considerable athletic talents, came from Portland, was a good athlete, but had a lot to learn in terms of technique and applying himself and the Pelinis weren't actually sure this guy was going to be a superstar when they when they first saw him. They were very impressed with him though because in the spring they arrived he was injured couldn't participate in practices but every day he line up right beside defensive coordinator called Pelini in practice stare at him listen to him they knew they had somebody special once they got here. Until him breaks free. And finally, a long run in the Alaska Territory for Arizona. This is as deep as they've gotten. And now maybe, maybe Bo will keep those guys in there because I think he wants the shutout. Well, uh, you know, we've been sitting here looking at the at the total yards, seeing if they would keep the Arizona offense under 100. It's just a big gap right here. But this is what happens when you start pulling people out. Jared Crick was out of the game. You're taking players out. And then they get a little bit sloppy on defense, lose your landing uh, assignment responsibility. Well, we saw Barry Turner, the defensive end, miss a tackle. And that's one of the few times all night long one of these black shirt players has actually made a mistake physically. And he's only got 36 yards in that run. They had 42 for the game before the carry. And there's a big hit on Grigsby. Philip Dillard, who's been active tonight, brought the wood. And stats do mean something. To defensive players and to coordinators, obviously. I mean, this is a well, group here. They do, and, and I understand it. I, I mean, and I don't think Mike Stoops would hold it against Bo Pelini right now that he's got Sue in the ball game. I, they understand football, and, and the goose egg means a lot to this football. You just don't want the guy, Craig. It, you no. know, the nightmare scenario is to suffer an injury. He even say it. I mean, he's a hand off and a, a big hit. Until a knockdown. I'm sorry I brought that up. But you know, I, you, I know. It crosses my mind. I mean, you know, Nick. <laughs> I'm up here. I'm following it. I'm watching every snap him. I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm fearful. And, and we're, we're sitting here on pins and needles. We, we, you just want him to come out okay. I mean, you know, I mean the comparison with Glenn Dorsey was made by Pelini when he was in an LSU talking with Dorsey about coming back and Glenn decided to do it. Very nearly got a serious knee injury in that season when he got shot blocked. Yeah. I mean, Sue hasn't uh, had any health issues at all. And you see the pass on third down behind Dean. Yeah, he's, he's still bringing it, though. That, and Namakan Sue knows one gear. This is a character deal here. You know, just come and, and holds up on Foles there. And he doesn't know when to protect himself. That's good. That's why he's a great player. Six of 24. For a quarterback, yards. that was... 
completing 66% of his passes coming into tonight. And this is the play if the Huskers can make it. And to cement the shutout. Dean comes in motion. And it is a first down completion. Terrell Turner. Terrell Turner. Well, give Arizona and this offense a lot of credit because they are battling. They're fighting. I mean, they should just be dejected by this point in the game. You start the drive, having generated only 37 total yards in the game. Here comes Crick back in the game, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> they want the shutout, I promise you, the Polini brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Never been a shutout in the history of this bowl game. Takes a shot to the end zone, had a man wide open. Chris Gronkowski, senior, was running free. He falls when he's had the rare chances to make a play, hasn't been able to do it. Here's a look at Sue tonight, double teamed again. Oh, oh, frustration oh, man. from Colin Baxter, the center. Well, I tell you what, Colin Baxter, when he, he gets a chance, he's going to try to give well, what he can. Colin Baxter better bring it. Let's on watch it. Snap. I'm telling you, bro. Better bring it. He's circled out here on the screen. Watch this play if he gets a chance. <laughs> he's swinging in the flat to Antolin. Here's this He's to the 20. We've talked a lot about Nebraska here, and, and Mike Stoops, though, what he's done for that program. And, and the year that they had, it was just so important, the success that they had, and uh, finished strong. He's changed the mentality of that program. No confidence. There was nothing there when he took over, but they're tough and they're strong. What Bo say, Bo Pelini, his buddy, he said, I went and visited him there, and I left Arizona and said, Glad I'm not here. <laughs> Antolin gets a first down. You realize they went 104 games without appearing in the top 25? Wow. Until they beat UCLA and got ranked uh, briefly this year. And that's a long drought. And this program was way, way down. Much more so than Stoops realized when he got here. And it's been a slow, steady building process. He had, he had to win at the end of last year against Arizona State, make a bowl to save his job. He said that was pressure. Oh, but think back, though, uh, what was it, three years ago? We did a Thursday night game. They beat Oregon. Yeah. That, and that was the right spots. That, that's right. That, that was a big game for him. Antillon hit by Sue. That, that was not Sue on the tackle. I mean, Capital One Bowl continues. New Year's Day. We talked about Northwestern and Auburn. In the Outback Bowl, and then Jopa and the Lions take on Les Miles and LSU in the Capital One Bowl, Capital One Bowl week on ESPN and ABC Friday. Daryl Clark has had an outstanding season, a quarterback for Penn State, but he struggled when playing the best defenses. You go back, you watch him against Ohio State, Iowa, congrats. less than 50% of his passes in those games. I'd like to say congrats to Coach Jopa, his 21st 10 win season. Bowls. Fires in the flat to Anthony who turns the quarter and gets down inside the 10 yard line. You realize that Joe's won 23 bowl games. LSU in their history won 21 bowl games. This is the 36th bowl. I think, and I'm going to mess this up a little bit, but the top 10 all time bowl appearances by schools, if the 10th is at like 30. One or something. So he's one. I mean, that's Nebraska as a team has gone to 46 bowl games. That's fifth most in the football bowl subdivision. Joe Paz won half that amount by himself. Exactly. Won the game. Wow. Third down as Nebraska tries to protect the shutout here. Inside of two minutes. Oh, spires over the middle and broken up. Good defensive play by Anthony West. And Nickelback defending David Roberts. So it's fourth down. Look at that. Working on that uh, gum. That gum. I wonder, you know, I'd like to have a, a, a chew meter on him. Uh, the the chomp meter. How many times he does that during the game? You know, the chalk meter. 
13th play of this drive. Husker fans are on their feet. Trying to urge on the defense and Foles will spend a timeout. Play clock was running down. <laughs> All the Nebraska fans then in that end zone on their feet. Hoping that the era of Dominican Sue on defense will end with a shutout, which will be their, their second this season. But this is not Louisiana Lafayette. They're shutting out. They'll open them to three. That was Held impressive. The Hokies to nine until that final touchdown pass. Kansas State, it was, was a big game when the North was, was on the line, smothered them. You think about this Nebraska team and just how close they were this year. They lost to Virginia Tech by one point. They lost to Texas by one point. They lost to Iowa State by two points. They're four points away from being 10 and one Man. on the season. 11 and one now. At the conclusion, Sports Center with Carl Ravitch, Scott Van Pelt, ESPN News. I'll have our post game extra. And ESPN360.com will have live coverage of the trophy ceremony. It's a nice trophy. In the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, the nice big killer whale. Big whale. It's, 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 it's actually it's one of my favorite postseason trophies, I really? must say. Yeah, I get fired up. You have up. a like top it. five, or is this just. Is... I probably, yeah. I, I... I'd probably say it's my favorite. I like the fact. crystal ball. Yeah, the crystal ball is nice. You can remove the crystal ball. You can't remove the whale. All right, here we go. Let's see if the Oscars can, can bow up here, prevent Arizona from getting three yards, and, and secure the shutout. Down on their feet again. We have a blitz look. We bring pressure up the middle. Falls hit. Incomplete. They don't blitz often. They brought pressure right up the middle. Pat has batted down. Look at the celebration on the Nebraska sidelines. A shutout as Sue walks off his final snap as a Cornhusker. And Bo Pelini just avoided the biggest dunk effort I think I've ever seen with a Gatorade bathtub. They messed up the execution. Yeah, they, a bunch of players hit, hit themselves, but look at the pressure here. They just line up. There's no mystery. They're able to get two players off the edge. Yeah, P.J. Smith coming off the edge there. Sue on the inside. I, I, I just don't understand that. I mean, you know what? Let it go. It's, it's over. Colin Baxter, yeah. he played a great player, one of the best that will ever play the game of college football. And Travis Washington will use a third quarterback now takes the snap Aaron Chris Larry Asani was standing right by me on the sideline and I said why is Sue still in the game and he looked at me and he said because he wants to be he told coach don't take me out I want to stay out there. It's been a muscular effort for big number 93 and all of his teammates it was a, a complete team effort DB's played great D line linebackers everybody. This is Washington. And this will be the first shutout in Nebraska's long bowl history. First shutout in holiday bowl history as well. And guys, this was a, a dud to end the season, but I, I really have enjoyed this Thursday night season with you. Our thanks to, to Mike Schwaber, director, Phil Dean, the producer, Marty Aronoff, Statman Extraordinaire, our spotter Mike Black, and the rest of our talented crew. It's been great. Yeah, the last couple of years with you guys. We, it's, we're a family on the road, and it makes it enjoyable each week when we hit the plane and uh Happy New Year to you guys. Great Thank job, crew. You too. Happy New Year. Look forward to working with you guys. I enjoy it. In sign of 30 seconds. And here's the handoff, very nearly breaking it. it. Was Lester Ward, our Capital One Player of the Game, is Niles Paul, who's contributed in different ways tonight as a runner, a receiver of the 74-yard touchdown, and also a returner. Only a junior. He'll be back. One of those corn husters coming back to make this a more than likely preseason top 10 team. Mr. Sue headed for the top of the draft board and a whole lot of money as two buddies from Youngstown, Ohio, who grew up in the same neighborhood. It's hard for Mike Stoops to force a smile because he was embarrassed tonight. He feels good for his buddy, but his pride and the pride of his team hurt tonight. Good season for the guys from Tucson, but. Not a good performance tonight. Completely overmatched. They'll bounce back, knowing Mike Stoops, his tenacity to get after it this offseason. A lot of players coming back. They build a lot this season. They'll be back next year. 
Hey, and Dominic Sue not able to outrun Aaron Andrews tonight. She's got the big guy. I'm not. If your final game, I'm not letting you outrun a post-game interview. I'm going to get you oh, once in your career. Oh, they told you you got to say thanks so much. Hey, what I want to know is why you decided to stay in this game. We know the bright future you have ahead of you in the NFL, but up 33 to nothing, why stay in the game? We, we want to solidify that we were the best team on this field, and that's what we felt like we did and we had to do. But, I mean, for the simple fact of me staying on the field, I'm not worried about getting hurt. God has me... Uh, it held in position, and if he wanted me to get hurt, he would have had me hurt a long time ago or whether, whether or not I stayed in that game. So I just want to keep playing and stay with my boy Barry Turner and uh, keep raising havoc out there. You told us yesterday, I'm tired of the award circuit. I'm ready to get back on the field. What does it mean to close out your Nebraska career with such a dominant defensive effort tonight? I mean, that's just the way we've been playing all year. We've kept getting better year, uh, week in and week out, and that's what we wanted to do. And we had one last chance to do it as a team, as this 2009, 2000, uh, 2019, and that's what we wanted to do, shut them out and realize, make them realize that we weren't, they needed to respect us because we felt that we really weren't respected at the beginning of this game. So I feel that we've done that and uh, we'll move forward. You take home all the hardware this year. You have a tremendous season, great plays, but what's the one memory you'll walk away from Nebraska with? Man, this is a great defensive line I got to play with. I mean, it's one of a kind, and I, I think Jared Crick is uh, the up-and-coming Sue, if you want to say, if not better, in my opinion. Uh, it's got to keep working, and Baker Steinkuhl is going to help him out next year. So I'm excited to come back and watch them play, but I mean, that defensive line as a whole, with all the injuries we went through and, and different things that we had to deal without the season, I mean, that's, that's one group that I never miss, I mean, that I'll always miss and never have a chance to play again with. I know this is, a, I, a lot of my coworkers feel the same. It was a pleasure to announce your games. Thanks so much. Thank Good luck you. in the next level. Appreciate it. Guys. Aaron, thank you. Just a pure class from Dominic and Sue. And Nebraska pitches a shutout. Arizona just able to get over 100 yards. Finally, with that last drive, they finished with 109. So, 33 zip, tune over to ESPN News for Post Game Extra for live coverage of the Surfing Ceremony. Go to ESPN360.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Greg, Jesse, and Aaron, and our entire crew from San Diego, I'm Chris Fowler. So long, Nebraska, the 2009 Pacific Life Holiday Bowl champions. Sports Center is up right now with Carl Ravage and Scott Van Pelt.